So it's just been over two months since Shutigatwa was confirmed as the Doctor. Not the 14th Doctor. The language was deliberately vague because we've got David Tennant. We don't know what's happening specifically in terms of the numbering, in terms of the order of the Doctors. Who knows what's going to be happening? But Shutigatwa was a name that genuinely, prior to his casting as the next Doctor, I didn't really know anything about when like you folks already know this story it was announced that he would be playing the next doctor when me and my wife went on our honeymoon we left on the uh, monday morning and we'd been in croatia for less than six hours we'd been we'd, we'd been off british soil for about six or seven hours and we're having our lunch um, at the villa that we were at i check my phone i'm just scrolling waiting for food to turn up and then the headshot appears on my Instagram feed, and I thought, was it one of these fake ones? Was it Bokta Who? You know, one of those fake ones on Twitter or Instagram, whatever. And it turned out, no, it was from the verified Doctor Who Instagram account. And I showed it to my wife. I said, oh, this is apparently the next Doctor. And she knew him, and I did not. I did not know about shooting at work, because my wife had watched Sex Education, and I had not. So, my initial impression was, you know what? If he's good, I trust Russell T. Davis. He's knocked out of the park when it comes to casting Christopher Eccleston, casting David Tennant as well. Um, while uh, Russell T. Davis had not worked with Christopher Eccleston prior, he had worked with David Tennant. To my knowledge, he's not really worked or had much interaction with Shooter Gatwa before his mind-blowing audition. But Shooter Gatwa is predominantly known for playing Eric in the Netflix show Sex Education. There's been three seasons with a fourth on the way. And... Basically, the Cliff Notes version of Sex Education is that it's a young adult dramedy, which is set in England, but it's kind of like an Americanized version of England that's also a little bit timeless. Everyone's got social media and mobile phones, but there's ye olde televisions in people's houses and old architecture. There's the headmaster's house, who like genuinely looks like it was it steps right out from the seventies, like it's the strange like oranges and the, the 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 baby poop green colors in the decor. It's a weird timeless aesthetic, but I'm really all here for it. But anyway. So at this school in sex education, uh, you get Asa Butterfield, who plays Otis, who's this really repressed kid, who is the son of a sex, therap sex therapist played by Gillian Anderson, who you may recognise as Margaret Thatcher from the, uh, Netflix's The Crown. Basically, a lot, there's a lot of Netflix crossover here. Uh, Otis is really repressed. Asa Butterfield's superb in it, and he was actually my choice pre-Tom Holland for the next MCU Spider-Man. He would have been my pick. I still think that... Um, marvel mr trick by not casting Asa butterfield but anyway it's in the past uh, and he's able to use his knowledge and second-hand third-hand experience of his mother's sex uh, therapist at, at home that he's overheard in order to teach kids and inform them about safe sex and contraception and things like that because the school that they're at has got a really repressive headmaster who has a son who is quite an underachiever who doesn't really know what he's doing he's socially awkward but eric is otis's best friend and eric is flamboyantly gay like he is the you just get one look at him and he is the archetypal gay best friend he is incredibly flamboyant and loud his laugh is so infectious and while Netflix's sex education could have just looked at this character and said he's just the fun comic relief gay best friend with a really big laugh. He became a breakout character because Eric undergoes several arcs across the span of the three seasons. What I loved about sex education that I didn't know about going into it was that it's basically an ensemble piece. You know, like you get a real attachment to these characters, not just what happens at school in education, but also what happens when they go home, like their home life and their personal life. And some there's so, several subplots that sometimes they intersect, sometimes they don't. But that's just, just the great joy of it. But with Eric, he without getting into spoilers, because I think you folks should watch Sex Education if you haven't already. It is a really socially conscious show as well. They talk uh, about topics such as abortion, about um, uh, about non-binary people things like that what you would typically see many other young adult shows not really touch or try and like skirt the edges of it is not safe for work there is a lot of nudity there's a lot of uh, swearing and sexual topics of course so it's not like it is a, like a hard 18 in terms of rating like if you're under the age of 18 you probably shouldn't be watching it but then again it is genuinely quite educational and informative it's a very progressive show that's incredibly well written, impeccably well acted. It also launched the career of, of course, like Shooter Gatwa, but also Emma McKay, who was in that Death on the, on the Nile, uh, Kenneth Branagh 
Poirot film as well. Uh, and there's several actors in it who you'll recognize. Like, basically, the cast is uniformly terrific. And the chat button in the chat is getting on this as well. You can get, don't get such an education from that chat, but get it from an actual sex education specialist or the Netflix show. So, yeah. But what we love about Eric is that he undergoes, like, pure discovery in terms of what he wants to become like how he wants to be perceived by people as well because he is like out and proud flamboyantly gay when he's with his friends and uh, in his social circles but he's much more closeted with uh, his family and in series three he also goes to nigeria for a wedding and there's a whole subplot there uh, and his relationship which is often strained with otis as well so why am I talking about sex education? Because it's basically the show that launched you to get was career for the most part and also netted him three BAFTA nominations in a row. He was nominated for three BAFTAs for series one, series two and series three. We learned about his casting as the next Doctor on the day that he was going to receive his third nomination at the BAFTAs. It's theorized that that was where he was going to uh, have the announcement, maybe up on stage, but it, it didn't happen. Maybe at least, who knows, that's different. But when it comes to shooting out with other work, he's in the upcoming Barbie. He's in a film called The Last Letter from Your Lover. He's done some other TV as well, including the Horrible Histories uh, film, Rotten Romans, which I wasn't able to see, unfortunately. So I am just strictly talking about sex education when it comes to my preconceived ideas of shooting out where. When I see Eric in sex education, I don't see the Doctor. That's fine, however, because shooting out where they filmed series three pre-pandemic like se series four has had to take a pretty lengthy hiatus away because they've not been able to film the fourth series and of course everyone's been busy with their realigning schedules it's a massive ensemble cast it's no mean it's, it's like no small feat to get all of those actors together for for a fourth series i think it's either about to start shooting or, or has shot um, and posting over is he is he Ken? Apparently, yeah, he's going to be a version of Ken alongside Ryan Gosling, who's also Ken. I think there's going to be multiple versions of Ken. Barbie and the Multiverse of Madness. You couldn't make it up. But for for Eric, I don't see the the fourteenth Doctor or fifteenth Doctor. I don't see a Doctorly presence when I look at Eric. But that's fine. He's an actor. It's a performance, obviously. I also think that he's playing his age down for Eric as well because he's still in high school. But what I do see when I see shooting out his performance as Eric is someone with extraordinary range, someone who is with a howling cackling laugh, able to make you fall in love with him, but also somebody who can take you on a wonderful emotional journey. Someone who has incredible screen presence, someone who just, he he'll command the screen that he's in. And some of my favorite moments in sex education is just when the camera is locked on him, nobody else in shot, he's looking and reacting to what somebody's telling him or somebody's opening up, and you're just watching this really stern and thoughtful portrayal of this character, and the cogs turning in his head. It's, dude's a talent, the dude's a find, he's an extraordinary actor, and when like someone who's able to really make you empathize him with like the humanity of the character, somebody who is comfortable in his skin, but still doesn't quite know where he wants to be, how he wants to be perceived, how he wants to take his relationship with the world forward. Somebody who's content, but still has a journey, which is what makes him a fascinating character, but is also a really incredible tightrope for Shooter Gatwa in terms of a performance. So, for example, when watching uh, Casanova, which is what uh, David Tennant did before working on Doctor Who series two in 2006. It was the show that Russ T. Davis worked on uh, where he discovered David Tennant and was like, oh, I want this guy as the next Doctor. You watch Casanova and I don't see the 10th Doctor. I don't see a 10th Doctor performance there. But vice versa, like Shooty Gatwa, I don't see the Doctor with Eric, but that's not to say he can't pull it off. I think he absolutely has the acting chops to do it. I also, like, if you look at him in, like, interviews and on the red carpet and stuff, with his facial hair, I think it's mainly the facial hair. And also, dude's jacked. If you've if you've seen the personal trainer uh, footage and videos, one second. I'll bring it up because it's it's worth doing. One second. Shooty Gatwa for the upcoming Barbie movie has been working with a personal trainer. And dude's ripped. Like... <laughs> 
like by the time he's cast as the doctor and he's going to be filming he's he's not going to be like running down corridors running away from daleks he'll be picking the daleks up and lobbing them out the window um like he's easily going to be the most physically commanding doctor since sylvester mccoy and believe it or not so with sylvester mccoy in the 80s if he'd opened his question mark jumper dudes like rips like schwarzenegger little known secret but yeah so he's gonna be one hell of a physical presence but he, yeah he's still he might still be rocking that barbie bod when he's when he's playing the doctor which would be fun but yeah that was a tangent i've now gotten distracted by looking at at those at those gym photos so the zero cover the dalek should be scared now yeah he's gonna go fisticuffs with uh, with cybermen as well the doctor says well we have all seen that colin pick what's the colin pick is that is there, is there something else i need to see as well tv create media hey only do you think there are any flaws of sex education in your opinion not any massive glaring ones i did actually have one slight issue with eric's character and that's um the fact that dudes got commitment issues that actually feel like it's it's a textual issue it's not a character issue it's like how many times are we going to see him commit infidelity the dude's got commitment issues and i think uh, it really needs addressing a little bit more the sexy colin pick we have what do i google folks colin baker is it shirtless mustache he <laughs> oh i see it okay that, okay this is safe for work but when was this taken now obviously he's it's uh <laughs> he's not like a, a shooty gatwa hench but this <laughs> this, this, <laughs> this doesn't look right <laughs> oh dear i caught even more of him <laughs> uh tony parker that's called being a teenage oh no uh, yeah I, I get it but it's not addressed in the show and considering how socially conscious many of the characters in the show are it feels out of character for otis or or someone like otis to not take eric to one side and say hey I, you have commitment issues like it feels like that's an actual issue anyway uh, how long do i leave this on the screen <laughs> just continue with the image up yeah <laughs> rest of the <laughs> what we should do we should like one second two secs this might take a minute for me to set up uh here we go two seconds uh add media source image here we go there we go can leave him there for a bit cool so <laughs> so <laughs> he's yeah he's just gonna be uh what is what kind of gonna be there for a bit cool anyway so yeah so when i look at shooty gatwa i see an incredibly terrific young talent who turns 30 in october like he's he's incredibly young but he shows in like insane promise and i also think it'll be interesting to know how he returns to the character of eric like four years since sex education series three i'm so glad that i got into sex education after um like after lockdown and after he was announced as the doctor because there's oh my god the ending of series three that's like a cliffhanger that's been like unable to be resolved for three to four years i think that's mad uh, so i'm glad that i got into it now i'm kind of like waiting for it but yeah so when it comes to king's hair imagine you come into the screen now out of context that's fine i want everyone to do that if you haven't hit that like button already do it for colin i, I can't tell which do it for colin smash that like button okay so yeah we've got colin on stream now he is technically my guest so yeah what i see with shooty gatwa is someone with insane promise i would love to know what his audition was because we have going back to sylvester mccoy again the second most chat doctor is that we have the audition video for when him and uh, he was he did a scene opposite janet fielding uh, they did a screen test with like two other actors as well but j and t and andrew Carmel were basically like yeah this is we want this guy they want this guy so yeah so i'm glad that um we have that footage because you see that audition footage of sylvester mccoy and even though he allegedly had a bit of help before the audition from uh, andrew cartmill that's like a fully fo like a fully formed or rounded doctor performance i can't roll my arms but i hope you take the point but yeah so i wonder what shooting out was audition was like but watching such education even though when watching eric i don't see 
the 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 next doctor that's not a prerequisite for he's not playing the doctor there he's playing a teenager with uh, who's a, a lot more emotionally immature somebody who doesn't have the weight of the universe on his shoulders and thousands of years experience but he's still incredibly talented and i really really can't wait to see what happens in like beyond or maybe even in the 60th anniversary specials so do i get rid of um <laughs> do i get rid of colin or do i leave him there for a little bit longer tony parker who else in sex education should appear in doctor who i'm surprised julian anderson hasn't been snapped up by doctor who yet but then again uh the timing might not have worked out um there is what's their name but honestly, almost anybody from say because they're all incredibly talented. I, all of the young uh, kids as well. I never expected uh, Adam Groff, played by Connor Swindles, to be so endearing as the show goes on. Um, yeah, keep Colin. Please get rid of him. This is a fifty-fifty. I feel like we need to keep Colin here. Get rid. Keep him up until the reviews. It's not that's safe. He's got trousers on. Captain Jack, it's gay. That, firstly, it's not, but that's fine. Keep hashtag keep Colin. <laughs> no, this is not Colin. This is his alter ego, Dolin. Get a poll going. I need to set up a poll. 